Ironwood Games. This is Andrew, and we are here for an exciting episode of Solid Start. My guests today are Marcus. Hi, I'm Marcus. I like pumpkin spice lattes and long walks on the beach. Welcome, Marcus. We're glad to have you. Plus two now if you want Marcus to go already. <laughs> Our, our other player is going to be Elias. Ironwood Games, this is John. <laughs> Classic inside joke. I love it. And finally, we have a spectator slash commentator who will not be actively participating, but may provide us some insights. Sebastian. Hey, I got nothing cool to say. That's all good. Neither do I, really. Um, I'm going to be... <laughs> Playing around, I just say things, and sometimes people laugh, and sometimes Marcus goes off and cries. So I do that a lot. I was just yeah, glad that this time it was a laugh. All right, so this is going to be one of our. Uh, we this is going to actually be the first episode of Solo Start. Our last episode got scrapped. So for the audience, so you guys know, we're going through um, a start of a draft. We're going to look at the first eight picks. So everything before anything wheels and kind of discuss what options there are. Everyone's going to make their own picks and we're going to compare where we're at after the first eight picks at the end and see which one of us has a solid start. Are you guys ready? Yeah, let's go. All right. So we need to do a little bit of housekeeping um, in that we need um, some colors. So Marcus, what color are you going to be recorded in today? Ooh, I'm feeling very toasted plum color today. Toasted plum. All right. Do you have like a hex code for that? Because, oh, producing is this is going to be fun. one a hex code? <laughs> I mean, one is a hex code, but that <laughs> is a very dark color. So, <laughs> Toasted plum. All right. Marcus will be playing in toasted plum. <laughs> Elias, uh, you have a color you want to be recorded in today. Teal. All right, Elias will put you in teal, and then I will uh, grab gold uh, for that. All right, are you ready? Here we go. Pack Toasted one plum. is coming up. You guys are going to see that now. Let me read you the cards. We have in pack one. We have crackle with power, memory lapse, dueling coach, Test of Talents, Aether Helix, Ageless Guardian, Guiding Voice, Stone Rise Spirit, Barog Befuddler, Mage Hunter's Onslaught, Heated Debate, Big Play, Fractal Summoning, Cogwork Archivist, and Archway Commons. Uh, well, Marcus, we'll have you, uh, I think, pick first when you're Already, we'll give you a minute to look through our selections here. What will be your pack one, pick one? This is a spicy pack one, pick one. Um, I feel the mythic is a little bit of a trap. I'm going to do Mage Hunter's Onslaught. A very solid card. So walk us through that. What were you thinking on... You mentioned that the mythic is a trap, or you think might be a trap. Yeah, so I mean, so earliest you can play is turn five, um, and then it deals five damage to one target, and then the next time you can play it to upgrade would be ten at turn eight, um, which then it deals ten damage to two targets, if I'm understanding that math correctly. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it just it just seems so slow for it to go off. Um, the also the butts kind of do matter in this from the little bit I've played, and so that five damage isn't necessarily always gonna get you. It's it's probably just gonna be a hit to the face kind of dilemma, um, which can be relevant um, or it can't. But with pest and stuff like that in here, life gain is slightly relevant. Um, so I'm going to go with Mage Hunter's Onslaught. I was really close between that and Heated Debate. 
I really wanted to pick Bleeded Debate um, because it is an instant, and with Major Craft and whatnot like that, having the flexibility of an instant I think is a little bit better. Um, but Hage, uh, just from what I played, if you're playing against Simic and uh, Magecraft, is Magecraft, is that the spell, the, the key ability I'm thinking of? And what do you play instants cast, and sorceries? Yes. When you cast or copy a spell, it, it um, yeah. does something? D okay. Does the thing, yes. Yeah. Um, but because I know against uh, Simic or Quandrix uh, class, the butts can be rather big, so I think just having the, the direct... Um, removal would be best. Fair enough. I like it. So you're going to tell with Mage Hunter's Onslaught for Marcus. Elias, what's your pack one, pick one? So uh, after after looking over the, all the cards before Marcus actually said anything, I was running on the same lines. Um, my pack one, pick one would also be Mage Hunter's Onslaught. Um, uh, both... Both uh, Witherbloom and Silverquill, um, from what I've played with them, um, can be pretty pretty dang aggressive. Um, Silverquill, especially with making making the Inkling the two one flyers. Um, I I I like I like just the the destruction on on a spell. Um, yes, it, it it the only thing to me that that brings a downside is the double black um but mage hunter's onslaught with yes being a sorcery um at sorcery speed not instant i think it makes sense um because on at sorcery speed you're going to be playing it more aggressively rather than defensively um which that second that second ability from it you know whenever a creature blocks its controller loses one life um, I think that actually will do more damage than people may realize, and or it makes it makes it to where people aren't going to block, um, or to trade for you know for that one life because later on in the game that does matter, or at least it can. Um, whereas my you know my second pick would also be heated debate. Um, it is it is sort of our instant speed two and a red um, can't be countered. Um, all great things um, for damage, and from what I've played with Red, I've played Lorehold, which Lorehold you can get to where instants and sorceries um, give life link, um, which can be a great thing. Um, also with Lorehold recursion from the graveyard, so being able to recur this um, for four damage, I, I I think can get pretty dang good. Um, some honorable mentions that that I want to I want to point out: Guiding Voice, um, I think, is a pretty strong common. Um, one, one white for a one one counter, um, you know, doesn't seem all that great, but the main thing right there is learn. Um, paying one mana to make something stronger, and then not losing not losing card advantage for being able to to slip in a lesson from from sideboard, I think, is absolutely great. Um, and speaking of lessons, I think Fractal Summoning um, is a great uh, 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 lateral pick here too, um, for the fact that if you're playing blue, if you're playing green, and you're not playing the other the other card of that or the other color of that, I think is it, 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 it's something to consider because you you don't necessarily need to be running Quandrix to play that card, so. Well, um, I think those are both, you both have the same pick, so I think those picks are good. You will be surprised to find out that I went with the trap. Oh, I took the goodness. crack with power. <laughs> um, but I'm going to defend it here um, because that's part of the format of this show is that I get to go last to always you know, highlight the poor choices that I made um, and then try and defend them. My biggest defense is, or defense, is that this was one of my first drafts, and I uh, go in with the mindset and kind of the theory of if you haven't played with the card, you don't know whether it's good or bad. Um, which I, I know you can ar make arguments, and some cards are just clearly good or bad. Um, but I think it's a powerful card, and so it definitely was one of those of as a mythic, how many times can you you know see it and draft it and kind of know? 
Um, Because I did that same math that Marcus was talking about. Um, But at 8 mana, getting to deal 10 damage to your opponent um, is kind of appealing. So there was that, you know, thought of, okay, yes, 5 damage for 5 isn't great. 10 damage, or 20 damage for 8 can be uh, pretty powerful and and game-changing. Finish that off. Did it end up being as good as I would have liked? No. Um, I think you guys have Spoilers. the better pick here. Uh, what's that? Spoilers. Oh. Well, I'm just saying in in <laughs> in playing with it, I think the Mage's Onslaught is a better card. Because um, the Crackle with Power with double red makes it kind of your forced into red. Um, the triple cost is a little... Eh, I never got it off. Um, I don't think for eight, you just games weren't going that long. Um, Mage's Onslaught, I think, is a secret game ending card. Um, or maybe not so secret, but I've won more games off of that. Um, like the turn that I cast it, winning the game by then attacking, um, rather than just using it as removal. That second clause, like Elias pointed out, wherever they block, they lose a life. If you can kind of go wide, then you just kill their biggest creature and then you just swarm them and they can block all your one ones pests or they can and lose the life still or they cannot and then get trampled by the pests so i find that it it makes combat math difficult for the defender it's um actually can be a a game winning card on that i like heated debate i think for the reasons you guys mentioned um as well as probably a better card uh than the crackle with power in in reality so let's go shall we go to sebastian any thoughts you want to add for us um yeah i find this set to be all the spells to be really overcosted, and i think there's something to say about memory lapses mana efficiency it um i think it does a lot for very little cost in comparison to some of these other spells um i'm not i don't like playing counter spells in limited and i'm not too familiar with the limited archetypes for the set but to me that seems like the most efficient use of mana for a card and if i was going to play something with counter spells even maybe even to protect myself from a board wipe or something time walk an opponent for a turn i think it's a pretty good card um but besides that, I would have gone for heated debate as well. Um, and, you know, I wasn't with Crackle with Power at first, but I think after you kind of kind of mentioned that late game power and then the ability to do maybe a, some sort of minor board wipe, I think it's got a little more versatility than I thought at first. Yeah, I think it does. Like if you could... Memory lapsed. If you could take the damage and like split it up, it's interesting. But yeah, then when you when it gets memory lapsed, you're like feeling really bad about yourself. Um, I've also yeah, lost what's coming next turn the yeah. games when I got my mage hunters onslaught countered, right? Because that's you're going in for a turn and that gets countered and it's uh, can be pretty good. So counters definitely, um, and memory lapse is definitely a a efficient counter spell. Um, right. It's really even like one. a time walk effect yeah. because they're putting that card back on top. You know it's coming. You know, you know. So even um, worst case scenario, they don't play anything very good, but they do tap all their lands to play it. And if you do have a little bit of a aggressive board state, then I think it could be pretty good. Get you, a, yeah, get you in or know they're off other tricks. Fair enough. All right, let's go. I like these these picks you guys have we're going in slightly different directions um remember as we go on right we're building a deck here so you want to consider your previous picks uh with your subsequent ones so here we go pack two is coming up here of course uh we got past a pack here with one card already taken out and what we've got here in pack two is eye twitch tenured ink caster thrill of possibility bookworm Arcane Subtraction, Unwilling Ingredient, Dragon's Approach, Skurid Colony, Tangle Trap, Rise of Extus, 
Elemental Masterpiece, Environmental Sciences, Silver Quill Campus, and another Archway Commons. Uh, we'll, Elias, we'll put you up first. We like to switch it up here. So, uh, so looking at it, I'm already in black. Um, nothing is really like screaming to me. Um, I like the bookworm because it is a nice, nice bomb. It is a nice, it, it, it is a nice, hey, deal with this or, or get hurt. Um, it does have, it does have the recur, you know, the recursion to it as well, um, which I do like it's card draw, um, bookworm. Since I really, I really like the bookworm seven, seven trample. It's just so much. I, I, I think that's what I would pick. Um, the other, the other card I would like to mention is the environmental sciences. Again, learn and lesson mechanic really really good environmental sciences keeps you open to colors it allows you to maybe if you have to go into three colors it allows that um i like yeah. it uh really really nothing else um is screaming to me so i like um the bookworm i like that uh, i think environmental science is good like you say for going to the third color or being open to colors um, Marcus, what would uh, you pick here to follow up your um, Mage Hunters onslaught? I really fucking hate that these... Uh, what are they called? The Spell Archive Mystical cards? Archive. Because uh, Thrill Possibilities is so good and it's really good in this set. Um, if it wasn't there, I would have taken the Environmental Sciences, but I gotta take the Thrill Possibility. Um, the the draw, the refresh, and with all the spells matter stuff kind of going on, um, I think I would take... I think it's so relevant to have kind of... There's so many cantrips that cycle through, and having that associated instant to draw to and red, in case if I do need to switch into uh, either Prismari or Lorehold, I think it's just super good, especially with the Great Red recursion of Lorehold. Um, I think that's super good, but... Um, yeah, so I would pick Thrill, and then Environmental Sciences would be my second choice. Think... It's hard, really quickly. It's hard because there's not there's not Rakdos synergy, um, so that's right. a little bit of a risk. But um, it's with cards like Environmental Sciences, it's really easy to do three colors. So, I was gonna say, I mean, yeah, I I kind of want to jump onto that just a little bit. So having played um, Lorehold uh, for white red. There's a surprising amount of card draw and recursion that you can get out of Lorehold just because you are recurring those instants and source, or you can be recurring those instants and sorceries um, from it. For for being white red, that traditionally is not draw power. You can get quite a bit of draw power out of it. Yeah, I haven't played Lorehold, but I know there's definitely some recursion there and some themes. So that's. Um, an interesting perspective. I didn't consider the thrill as a kind of lore hold enabler, but you're right. It does puts things into your graveyard that you can recur, um, but also lets you dig into more instants and sorceries. Well, and and that's the thing. So going off of your pick, so so your first pick, Crackle with Power. I mean, yes, Prismari want you know Prismari still, even though it's it's still red blue and 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 Strixhaven, you know, kind of switched up the colors. Um, Prismari pretty much does what is it wants to do, cast spells. Mm -hmm. It just casts spells, cast bigger spells is the main thing. Um, but I know you pick Crackle with power that does scream Pris Prismari, but I think it is a good lore hold. Um, because at the beginning of the game, so say say th you've got you you've got thrill possibility here, you have thrill and crackle with power, you could you know, possibly use that crackle as the discard cost, draw two, and then later on, once you have the mana, which Lorehold wants to go into late game, um, then you recur the crackle. So I mean I yeah. I think I think I think there's very strong possibility with Lorehold between Thrill and Crackle. Not only are there possibilities, but they're thrilling. Oh. I oh. surprise, surprise, I did take Thrill of Possibility um as a follow-up to Crackle with Power. Like Marcus said, I do think it is just the best card in the pack. Um, outside of that, and then I think pairing it with the Crackle um, made it 
seem like a no-brainer. Um, I like the environmental sciences. I think you both pointed that out as a is a good card and something early on to consider just as uh, staying neutral. I I'm surprised that none of neither of you mentioned the tenured ink caster, and maybe my evaluation is just bad. I just think that's a better card than um, than not. And with your pick one black card, um, your mage hunter's onslaught, it um, seems like something I would at least consider. Um, if you can get counters on multiple creatures that drain um, on the attack, it's a, you know, again, that ends the game with Mage Hunter's Onslaught, attack with just three or four creatures with counters, drain them for four, they can't block or they'll lose another four. You can have a pretty big turn um, with them. Um, so, yeah. No, go, go ahead. No, what are your thoughts on the Incaster? So my thoughts with the Inkcaster, because I did look at it, I looked at both uh, iTwitch and Inkcaster, you know, knowing I'm already in black, and I was thinking about it. But what gets me is it's a five mana cost for a 2-2 two, two body. Um, yes, it has the effects, but then those effects only work with 1-1 one, one counter archetype. So if you're not going heavily into it, so say right now we're in black you're looking at the ink caster so now you're you're thinking you know you're, you're thinking of going into silver quill um if you end up going wither bloom or all all together maybe just saying oh i'm going to splash in black ink caster does you nothing at that point so to say i i personally over over the two black uncommons i would take the eye twitch over the ink caster because one, it's a turn. It's a turn one play with evasion, and even if it dies, I'm going to get something out of it. I'm going to get a card to replace the eye twitch off of its learn ability. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I like the eye twitch. I, I, I just I really like tenured inkcaster. Um, the fact that it can put the counter on itself, so it's really you're paying five mana for three power. Um, so yeah, it is just a two, two, but it can come in as a three, three, or you can put it anywhere else. And, you know, it has an immediate impact on the board. So it's, I look at it as, as a two for one, right? You're getting a two, two body plus you're getting a plus one, plus one counter with effects. Um, I mean, I, I get that. I, yeah. I get that. Um, the only, like if it were maybe pack two or pack three three or maybe even later on in this pack i would you know then then i would start considering it but being this early um in in into the draft i mean you know not only into the pack but mainly into the draft i would look at this and that that to run that card it's really really narrowing how you're going to be building right. your deck and how you're going to be viewing the draft in my opinion the opportunity cost is too high for you this early yeah, I mean, it, yeah. It, it, lo looking at that, if I want to run that, I mean, yes, at five mana, yes, it, it does give you a body and it does give you a counter that you could put on something. But, I mean, maybe if it were a 3-3 three, three and then had the same effect, sure. But being at a, a, a five for a potential 3-3 three, three that, you know, the the effect die, you know dies or something... Mm -hmm. it it it's 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 very very it's it's very niche to me yeah understandable i um yeah i don't it's definitely not something i would pick over other options in this um i just kind of mentioned it cuz um i felt like with your guys with both of your kind of pick and black in the first one it was worth mentioning um um if i can yeah jump we're in just for about a to see what your thoughts um, were yeah, not um, considering like my pack one. Uh, just considering this card on its own, even this early, I would have picked a uh, tenured inkcaster um, over thrill possibility. Those are like obviously thrills probably the best, and it's just from the little bit I've seen of the set, it's obvious that like it definitely you want to put throw that in a lower hold deck. Uh, my problem is that I don't know how I would build a lower hold deck just because I don't know this set too well. Mm -hmm. So my decision point would be like, well, do I want to stumble around and try to figure out the archetype? Or can I just, you know, this the archetype can explain itself for tenured ink caster. It's counters matters, you know, 
plus one plus ones matter. So to me, that's a much more simple thing to build around than thrill. I think thrill, I would have to know the set a lot better and to know what I'm going to draft. And Tanner Dean Caster, it's, it's great timing for it. You know, you, that means you have the rest of the draft to build around it. Right. You just draft a bunch of, um, you know, and looks like it's going to be in black. Usually green, green, black is plus one counters. This set's a little funky and things got swapped around. So maybe just keep an open mind and look for plus ones, plus ones. Yeah, I think so that's just, I think it's just a simpler game plan for me. Yeah, and, and something I, that I've played before, so it's not unfamiliar to me. Yeah, I, was, I think that's a fair point. That kind of it is an early kind of points you in the right direction, and thrill kind of says, "Okay, I've got lots of possibilities, but how are we going to build this, or what are we going to do?" And maybe the lack of knowledge of some of your archetypes could come into play there. All right, we'll move on. If you guys, if you guys at home are watching, if you have strong opinions one way or the other, please leave them in the comments. Let us know um, how. Sebastian and I are right about Tenured Inkcaster and Elias is wrong. Or if you think Elias might be right, you could say that, but we all know he's not. So it's I mean it's a sign port it's a sign post black uncommon. I it's fine. I so my perspective was that um there's a lot of tokens that are fragile and so uh, building up uh, plus one plus one counters on tokens is just uh, not in my experience, a lot of the games like it just doesn't necessarily feel worth it. Um, I, I think it's fine, but I odds are I feel like it would wheel because you do have to kind of build around. So if we get another, like if we get that like white plus one plus one learn spell and and whatnot or another one of those or whatnot, depending on what's going on, I'd pick it up on the wheel. But odds are I doubt it's going to be. Um, I I doubt it's going to be a pack one pick one. But hmm. Sebastian proved me wrong. So look for I mean. Yeah, look for it on the wheel. I think coming back on a wheel is definitely a signal um, right. on that because that's something that I think people like Sebastian and I are looking at maybe picking higher. So, um, but odds are, I, if I I'm gonna discard that to throw a possibility and draw two more cards. Yeah, <laughs> fair fair enough. I think thrill. As I said, I picked it. I think it's a good card. All right, let's go to pack three. In our third pack here, we are past reduced to memory. Brackish Trudge, Shock, Serpentine Curve, Arrogant Poet, Tome Shredder, Bayou Groff, Exhilarating Elocution, Silver Quill Pledge Mage, Teach by Example, Infuse with Vitality, Campus Guide, and Environmental Sciences. We'll put Marcus up. Uh, first, we'll run the clock and let us know when you've got a pick, Marcus. I don't like any of these cards. Um, um, I'm just going to take the environmental sciences. I think that's just a safe bet, as I don't really know. It's too early. you got to kind of commit right to this pack because there's so many other things that want you to do stuff. Um, and so I think the environmental sciences that keeps me open for a possible third color is just the best thing right now. I feel like there's a couple things that are traps unless if you have a little bit more support. Like what? Like <laughs> exhilarating allo <laughs> allocution. I agree. I think that I played that in my um, pre-release sealed, and I felt like every time I hit my hand, I was like, this is a trap. This card is a fucking trap. <laughs> Brackus Trudge, if you have lifelink relevant, that, that card can get out of control, but I haven't picked anything with lifelink or life gain. Bayou Groff is also really good. Um, it pairs really nicely with the uh, eye twitch. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm not in green. Um, and I think that might wheel. I haven't seen too much green going around. Um, Infused with Vitality, I think, is interesting, but it's saving a creature. And if you're doing tokens, it's not relevant. I don't have any creatures yet, so I don't. that might wheel. Um, yeah. and then reduce to memory. Reduce to memory is a good removal spell. It's also good if it's a lesson, but sometimes the three two. There's, the, I mean, you're 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 not you're not really gaining anything. You're just like trading a pain bigger pain in the ass or a lesser pain in the ass. Um, and if you're going against lower hold odds, are they're gonna have a spirit or a lord or something like that? That's just gonna make it 
rough. So, okay. I, in my experience, reduced to memory wheels. So, yeah. well, Elias, what would what would you pick out of here? So, with the with with what I already have, um, I would pick the infuse. Um, yes, it yes it saves. Uh, I mean, it's a it, it's a save. It's a it's a kill spell. Um, as long as you have the body. Um, but what it also does is that gain two life. Um, that that actually matters. Like normally, normally you look at a spell and you're like, oh, gain two life, whatever. Um, but knowing I'm already in green black, I'm already running Wither Bloom. I want to pick that up. Um, that way, I if I start picking up more um, Wither Bloom spells, it starts running them. Even if I don't pick up anything to where it's like, oh, you know, you need to gain life to ha have this effect pop. Again, it's a kill spell as long as I have a body. Um, or it's, it's, hey, you just killed something. I'm going to make sure that it doesn't die. Uh, honorable mentions, of course, would be environmental sciences. Um, the other one that Marcus didn't mention is that Silver, silver Coil Pledge Mage. Mm -hmm. That is actually very, very strong. I've every time I've ran against it, it does something. Um, for the simple fact of yes, it's a three one, so it has potential to remove on on defense. Um, but also, also you can you can make it, you can give it flying um, <laughs> for casting a spell, which this this set wants you to do. Um, or if you cast a spell on defense and you're going to trade, you get some life as well. I think is absolutely great. Um, as Marcus said, uh, reduce the memory. Yes, exile. You know, non-land permanent, so you have the versatility. Um, downfalls for it: double white, uh, sorcery speed. You're you're you're. It's 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 gifting. You're 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 not actually getting rid of a threat. Like Marcus said, you're just making a smaller threat um you're not really dealing it with any gods in this set so the whole exile i don't think matters as much except maybe if you're going against lore holds where where recursion matters um and then my last thing trudge um every time i've pl either played with it or played against it it's very underwhelming that's interesting. I haven't played with it. When I've played against it, I've had both. I've had some decks that really can get the life gain and um, sack it to effects and then bring it back in the same turn. Um, but then I've also had ones where, yeah, it was just sitting there not doing anything. So it's... Um, Trudge, I think, is kind of a mixed bag. Um, my pick on this was I went with the Shock. Shocker. <laughs> Um, I had already picked uh, two red spells, kind of focused on some damage and doing that, and um, I think Shock is just really good card. Um, it kills off um, a lot of annoying, you know, two drops like the Tenured Inkcaster, um, the um, the Amplomancer. Uh, that doubles its power and things can kill those pretty early. Um, so I just think it's a good early play to get rid of some of those troublesome creatures that can kind of sit around for a while. Um, I agree on a lot of um, the thoughts you guys had. I think Silver Quill Pledge Mage is good. Um, reduced to memory, I don't think is good. I, I have that same evaluation. I think it's um, not worth the cost. And maybe as a lesson on a wheel, I'd take it just to have something to deal with a real problematic uh, creature. I like Infuse. I think for the reasons you said, that makes sense. If I was in green, black, um, or at least one of them, I would consider it. The only other consideration really, I mean, there's plenty of call it cards that are good and you could still stay open. Uh, the other thing I would consider would be environmental sciences, uh, just to get a little more open or um, not be as committed to it being in red. Um, but instead, I went the other way and I just said, I'm going to just lean into red here and uh, go for it. Let's go on. I think Sebastian had to 
Uh, drop. We've lost him for a little while. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to move on to pick four and uh, evaluate where we are. Where we are. Let's see. Uh, pick four will be an Elias uh, pick first. So let's see what we've got. Shadewing Laureate, Reflective Golem, Star Pupil, Frost Trickster, Waterfall Aerialist, Pillar Drop Warden, Professor of Zoomancy, Elemental Masterpiece, Teach by Example, Infuse with Vitality, Needlethorn Drake, and expanded anatomy. So this one to me for what I'm already in isn't a really hard pick. Um, I'm gonna pick the professor of Zoomancy. Um four for a four three body. Um it also creates a hey, one one black green pest that gives me life when it dies. Um again. Um, I'm already in green black. It's wanting to to have gain life shenanigans. Um, a four three body, great for four. I'm getting two bodies for four mana. Zoomancy is the easy pick here. Um, runner up would be another infuse. Um, it's good. Um, I think I think I would only really want maybe two. Um, if I have nothing else, maybe play three. So I mean, I'm already I'm already cutting green and black pretty hard going to the left. So I mean, maybe this wheels. Um, other card that I'd be looking at would be the ex uh, expanded anatomy, um, colorless lesson, great sideboard card. Yeah, I think that's a fair point you make with the um, with your picks. You've definitely cut black green pretty good. Um, so the infuse is a good chance of wheeling, um, or at least not being something that tempts uh, people to your left to go into black or green, since it's a dual car color, they'd have to go into both black and green. Uh, Marcus, did you make a decision? What would you pick here to follow up your environmental sciences from last pick? So if we notice some patterns, and I need to start being practicing this as we're moving out, um, Prismari is pretty open. Um, gr there's not a lot of green, um, and there's not a lot of black. So that tells me that that is maybe being kind of sniped right now. Because um, we've passed by two Teach by Examples, Prismari wants to copy shit, and that is not being done right now. So I might look into switching some stuff up um, or going down that road. Um, Professor Zumanti is super good. I love that. That it's. I mean, I love uh, things that create tokens. I mean, it's just a two for one. So good. Um, I am going to step outside my comfort zone and pick the Reflective Golem. Um, because I can. It leaves me open to do a bunch of different things. Um, it uh, leaves me open for mage craft triggers. If I need somehow people switch out of green and need to go simic, it's relevant for that. Um, if I need to do white, um, we've already talked about how it's really good for for buffing. Um, uh, it, it essentially just it turns combat combat trips. Wow, I can't say those words. Combat tricks into a two for one. Um, and there's so many that draw you cards and whatnot that I think that having that as just an option is pretty good. Um, my runner-up would be Pill Drop Warden. Um, I think it's a four for one five with reach, um, and then you can get something back when it becomes irrelevant. Um, that would be my number two. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go with Reflective Golem. So the issue I have with Reflective Golem, and correct me, on, on how I'm wrong. Or, or, my issue, though, is that you have to target the Reflective Golem. If it would yep. copy anything that just targeted a single creature, like, I'd be much more on board with it. But the new the copy, you can then choose new targets for it. Right. Yeah, so that's why it's, it, I think it's, it, uh, even though, yes, you have to target it just to begin with, it then still adds flexibility. No, and I, I agree. My issue is just then you're committing it to be 
to, in, to entanglements, right? I'm saying I want wanting to put it into combat. Um, and as a 2-3, I just don't know that it's getting into combat as often um, unless I have a trick and then it's kind of obvious because... Or you fake the trick like I do. <laughs> That's a good strategy. <laughs> Play your opponent, not the game. It oh, doesn't always work out though. If they don't, if they <laughs> see through it, then you just lost your reflective golem. Yeah. So I do, I do want to want to say something about Marcus's pick. Um, going off of what your other picks are, um, you aren't heavy in a single color, and the fact that you picked the two colors you do have um, don't work. You know they don't work well with one another. They're not, they're not built around in the set. Um, it does give you the option of either, you know, maybe going into silver coil or, you know, possibly Prismari or Lorehold, which Prisma Prismari wants you to, to copy spells. It wants you to do stuff like that. Um, Lorehold kind of the same thing. It wants you to play those spells and recur them. Um, I like this golem for that fact. I mean, cause if you're playing silver quill and say, Say you have the guiding voice, the uh, white, uh, put a one-one counter on target creature, then learn. I mean, you pay you pay the extra two, so the the one mana spell becomes three, but then you're getting it twice, so you're getting two plus one-one counters, and then you're learning twice, so you're paying three mana to not to not only play the one card and then replace it, but then you also replace it again with another lesson. I think that can work. Um, I mean, I mean, especially if the two colors that you have want to work with white and, or at least in my mind, they want to work with white to be able to, to use those counters, to use, you know, things that, that work well like that. That's just where my mind goes. Yeah, and I I see that. I think it's fair. I just worry that it's like getting into the realm of too cute and like trying to get too much value. Because um, crackle with power isn't too cute, or trying to get too much power. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's not too much power. You're crackling with power. <laughs> fair enough. I am and. <laughs> distracted or fooled, tempted by power too often. And technically, with Reflective Golem, you can copy it. Ooh. I don't think... Well, yeah, but I'm targeting my crack, my <laughs> Reflective Golem for five days. Like, that's... I guess... And, and that's the other thought. At this point where I was at, I was kind of red with direct damage and things and thinking most of the spells that I have that would target him wouldn't target him because they're going to be damage spells, right? I have a Shock and a Crackle with Power. And then Thrill of Possibilities, which doesn't target. So it also just didn't do anything um, in my particular deck. I just, in general, that's the issue I have with him. I don't know if that's, like I said, I don't know that that's a, a good issue. That's the one I have. What I did take, though, I will say, is I think this is one of my favorite cards, um, at least in blue. And I took the Frost Trickster. Um, it's a 2-2 two -two flyer for 3, which I think is a really good deal. Um, and it also freezes, it taps down and, and freezes down an op, um, oppose, opponent's creature uh, for a turn. So it can come in and really make a difference on the board um, as well as being a decent threat on its own. And with having, you know, the three red cards kind of looking at Prismari, um, like Marcus mentioned, I felt like Prismari was kind of open um, and there was been a couple of things that have that we've passed, there's a couple of other options in here that could wheel around um, in the Pillar Drop Warden, the Waterfall Aerialist, and then the two actual Prismari spells. Um, so it seemed like the best kind of, in with what I had already had, kind of coupling with uh, where I was going. So to run off of what you pick, I do like that you pick the body. Um, not only do you pick a body, you pick a body with evasion. Mm -hmm. um, you pick a body that shuts something down for a little bit. Um, I like that you didn't uh, that you didn't say teach by example <laughs> before you revealed your pick. I kind of thought you were gonna go and go. Oh, I'm gonna I I picked teach by example, 
and that made me really nervous because I was like, you have no bodies <laughs> in all of your picks so far. I mean, yes, teach by example would, you know, would be nice. Um, but as as you both have already stated, we've already seen two of these. Prismari yeah. looks open. More than likely, this is, I feel like this would wheel. So I'm glad that you picked the body. And I, and I didn't mention it, but you're right. I was very aware of that. And so in my mind, the considerations were only between the three the two blue creatures and the warden. I also think teach by example is too far into the cute zone. Um, when you draw that late game with nothing else, it's a dead card. Um, and then you're waiting to draw another good card. Like I'd rather just have a good card um, in place of it. Or so, turn three, you can copy your shock. I was just going to say that. Yeah. I mean, three mana for four damage to anything is pretty good. Copy the Magecraft matters a lot more than you would expect. I think actually teaches pretty good. They're just, I mean, copying our throw possibility. I don't think is worth it. No. Um, and I, 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 technically, copying Invital Sense is also pretty good. Yes. So I think it's. I I would definitely. I still find value within it. I don't. So I'm gonna challenge that. I don't think it's cute. I actually think it's pretty relevant. It just there's, that's just something that's still gonna wheel because it's one. It's not right. in that. We're not in those colors. And two, there's nothing good that seems to be worth it right now and but it, so it really matter, matter i cool. think you're right because i've um copied a mage hunter's onslaught and getting to kill two creatures and deal two damage if they block like have them drain for two or lose two life when they block is backbreaking i just don't know that it's worth the card that's my my issue is especially this early on Right, like I would pick it up later on when there's nothing else, but this early, I would rather have a card that does something on its own. Which I mean, a hundred percent. Um, at the same time, I a hundred percent agree with Marcus that it's not a cutesy card. Um, I mean, like I stated earlier, Prismari is looking to drop those big spells. What I look at when I when I look at Teach by Example, I think you're the what you're wanting to target with that are your cheaper spells early game so like your shocks your environmental sciences that way it starts helping you build for the late game because i mean turn three you have you know you, you say you have that shock that you, that you picked up and then you have te teach by example turn three you, you, you play your land you pass so and say opponent goes you have that option to for three mana to spend four you know you know do four damage to to something that drops down that can be can be a nuisance um i i think that's pretty dang strong i mean because i i i'm thinking like you, you you can shoot planeswalkers um you can shoot you can shoot creatures i mean yes you can shoot shoot to the face with that shock but that four that four damage potential early game to just slow your opponent down I think would be pretty de detrimental or, you know, or say you, you teach by example, like Marcus said on environmental sciences, you're going to be getting two lands for life. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think can be pretty good. I mean, that, that, that helps set up for your, for your Prismari late game of dropping those big spells. Question, can I, if you teach, oh, go Marcus, this is a real question. If you teach by example, you teach by example, is that three copies then your next spell or is it? No, it's just two, right? <laughs> this is not a rules discussion. We're not supposed to... If I... Okay. I'm going... Okay. Walk me through. So we're so playing Shock. We Shock is on the stack, and then I'm going to play Teach by Example targeting Shock? No, if you just... Because when you cast your next instant sorcery spell, you copy that spell. So you Teach by... You know, don't worry about Shock. You just Teach by Example. You're Teach by Example. I hear what you're saying, but I'm trying to, like, process... I'm visualizing this on a stack. I'm sorry. So you Teach by Example... And that resolves. So then you cast Teach by Example. Teach by Example. Again. And then I get a second so, copy. So you get two Teach by Examples. So the first so one resolves, two. the next thing I cast, then the second one resolves, the next thing I cast. So I'll get three of the next thing. So then when I cast my Shock, I get two triggers are waiting. Yeah, two new talk, two new copies. Okay. So I would get three copies altogether, yes. If you want to cut that part out, that if it's not a real thing, I just I was like, okay, because then you can kind of cut for five mana. That's a pretty decent combo. Well, um, so hold hold on. So you play Teach by Example, it copies it once, and you choose new you know new targets. So you play Teach, 
So you you have one teach on the stack. It copies it. So then you have two copies on the stack. Okay. Yes, and then right. then you shock, so you get three three copies total. Okay, I, I had to run run that through my head. I'm like, uh. yeah, no, that's what, yeah, that's what I was saying. It's I just had to visualize it and kind of see. So, but here's my counterpoint, and this is to to Elias. Your example about teach by example and then shock. So for three mana, I get to deal four damage, right? Correct. Why wouldn't I just want to play heated debate? Like it's a three mana four damage spell. To target creature or planeswalker. Yes, I have a few less options, but it doesn't require having two cards. Now, now, it's, see, it's but why, why, why? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Magecraft, and that's that's a fair answer. That's a fair answer. I have not, with playing with Prismari, um, there is a lot of Magecraft, but so far, I don't feel like we've we seen. seen it any no. of the magecraft and I don't have any of it. So it's not something at this point I'm thinking about in picking, but you're right. That is a fair point. If we had a heavier leaning into magecraft um, would be a good reason um, to worry about the, the combo then. But then, but then, but, but then also like <laughs> the heated debate, we've seen one. Um, what's, what's the likelihood that that's going to wheel around? In these packs, yeah, um, not very likely. So if... I mean, I get, I get what you're saying, I do, but to say one of your picks wasn't heated debate, one of your picks was shock. So I, I, for me, that's why, that's why I'm going over teach by example with shock, not, you know, not heated debate. Right. No, and and that's fair. I'm, I'm just, just saying in my mind, that's what I look at it as. I'd rather that be a single card. I, and that's why I'm just picking an, a card, not saying in this particular pack, but just if that was a heated debate, that would, to me, if, the, if this pack had teach by example and heated debate, I would pick heated debate 100%, over teach by example. 100%. 100%. Okay. I, I, I 100% agree with you. So okay. say it, now, now, if we're looking at heated debate versus shock and teach by example, um, heated debate, yes, can't be countered, but then you're limited to creature and or planeswalker or creature or planeswalker. Whereas with shock, teach by example, you are open to whatever you want. Yeah, and you can split and then, the damage. And then on top of that, you can exactly. Yeah. Thank you. No, it's it's a very very good point, and you're right. I think that we're looking at it kind of in different perspectives, and that's where I was saying I was thinking of it as a side by side choice. Got it. Got and it. I think you're looking at it as a sub a follow-up choice yes all right marcus any last thoughts we're gonna move on let's move on okay um guys when we get into these feel free to leave some comments let us know uh, i don't know that any of us are worried about being right or wrong elias is always wrong anyways so um I was gonna say yeah co comment section please please let andrew know how he is wrong about this instance <laughs> Uh, but we look forward to your comments. We love to to see everybody's opinions and and really know, um, and give us reasons. We want to see reasons too, not just uh, because you like it. All right, let's go. Pack five here, or our fifth pack coming to us. We get past Defiant Strike, Brackish Trudge, Access Tunnel, Barog Befuddler, Soothsayer Adept, Essence Infusion, Dragon's Approach. Illustrious Historian, Spring Main Servant, Introduction to Annihilation, and a Witherbloom Campus. Let's see, who is up? Uh, Marcus, you're up for the first pick here. I really want that Essence Infusion, but I'm going to pick Defiant Strike. Oh, uh, because I got the Reflective Golem and I can... Copy, copy the defiant strike and it turns into not only a buff so it'll be turned into um a four three but then i draw two cards for three mana um the essence infusion would make it a big beefy golem um but the draw i think is much more important so i'm gonna go with the um defiant strike i really want also that introduction to annihilation um but the defiant strike i feel is better for me I think you're you're right on with that reflective golem. This defiant strike strike following that up is like the perfect card to cast on that golem. Um, and makes me now feel bad for saying the golem is terrible because 
<laughs> yeah, Defiant Strike, draw two cards, and pump two creatures for three mana seems pretty good. And I also feel that since Fusion has a high chance of wheeling, um, so that also is a, another aspect. Anyway, go ahead, Elias. Uh, so yeah, my pick right here would be the introduction to Annihilation. I was going to say, I mean, ne- <laughs> do I need to say more? Five mana, get rid of non-land permanent. I mean, yes, yes, you give a card, but um, lessons do not have to be in main board. Can be 100% in sideboard, so I can main it, or when I go into deck building, I realize I have some learning going on. Sideboard it is. Pick the Witherbloom campus, seeing as you're kind of in black green. I mean, 100%, I agree with you. Um, if I was, you know, I mean, yes, it, you know, with a room campus, I'm already in those colors. It gives me something. One, it gives me mana. Um, yes, uh, late game, it gives me the scry that I need or if I need. But the wither, I think the wither bloom campus is more than likely to wheel compared to the annihilation. Annihilation can go in any deck. I, I disagree that it'll wheel. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, I, well, like I said, I think it has a higher probability to wheel compared to Annihilation. I'm not saying it will wheel. I'm just saying I know for a fact if I don't pick up this Annihilation, I'm not going to see it again. So I'm I'm going to jump in here and say I agree with Elias's assessment um, that I think the Annihilation is a higher pick for every other person at the table over the wither bloom because that's going to be a pick by people that are in black or green um, or splashing well right so but I, they're going to be at least in one of the two i feel like to yep. pick it up this early um in, in pack one on a wheel i don't particularly also controversial statement i don't like the dual lands the campuses i don't think they are worth picking i think to me i take them when they're kind of at the end and nothing else works in my deck. I think the coming in tapped is not great. If I'll pick it up for maybe for a splash um on that. I think the scry is okay, but is not, you know, worth prioritizing over other cards that are that do something for my deck. Plus, I'm already in black green. I was going to say if, if, if at the end of this draft all I'm in is black green, then right. do I really need the dual land? I'm gonna be I'm gonna be running a pretty I should be running a pretty even split on between forests and swamps. I say so. Again, annihilation all the way. Yeah, I when I think like you say that's a good point. I think where I have like a bomb card that's off color and I want to splash it, then those campuses become a little bit more important. But if you're in if you're looking to be in those two colors, you don't really miss it. Yeah, I mean, what what do I need the slow color fix for when I can just pick a card? Right. I so I I when it comes to the argument of mana fixing, okay, fine, but that's essentially like a free artifact that you can scry with because you don't need black or green to scry with it, and it's it's a, essentially a free card that allows you to scry late game. I those campuses saved me a couple times during pre-release scrying to get something in case if I ran out of gas. I think that's a lot more. Relevant. I definitely agree that Nurture Annihilation is definitely the, the higher priority card and it won't wheel. Um, so th- that is definitely the more relevant choice, but I definitely think you guys are not giving enough credit to the campus. Because even if you're even if you're not in black green, I think out of if you're layer well, something else, I would think campus is once again, it's it's even if you're not gonna use the black or green, it's essentially an artifact then for a free artifact to scry. I, I see what you're saying. I just feel like it's slow. The fact that it comes in tapped and I can't scry for another turn. Yeah, comes in tapped. It's going to say four mana to scry. I mean, yes, I, I get it. 100% scrying scrying late game is great. Yeah. That can be that can be a make or break thing. Later on in the pack, sure. Um, maybe on a different pack, sure. But yeah, right right now, that's... That's not something that's in my mind. I'd rather I'd rather ha- either have the removal. I'd rather have the the two two and a green, um, the three two body. That's also going to give me life. Um, I'd rather have the essence infusion. That again is going to give me life. 
pump up my creature. I mean, the Witherbloom campus really compared to the other stuff in black and green, that's that would be low on my radar. I would I would much rather have the spring main or the essence infusion. So even if annihilation wasn't in this pack, I would pick the the spring main or the essence infusion over over Witherbloom campus. So one of the things I like about this format is we get into these kind of nuanced discussions about it because right we were at first like I was poo-pooing on the campus and I think Marcus your point was that it's better than we're giving it credit for. Um but then uh, to Elias's credit as well like you're we're considering in the context of this pack. Um so that's why I really enjoy this this conversation because we get into that nuance of is it good here versus is it good ever you know in those general, kinds of yeah yeah um and i appreciate all the opinions i think everyone can have a different opinion and we kind of see it differently and i like that's how we i i learn a lot from hearing from you guys um talk about what you think of those because it makes me go back and reconsider and say maybe i, I haven't been taking enough campuses in my drafts what'd you pick um in this pack i picked the soothsayer adept so i really um like this card I went with, I was kind of, had been moving right up. My last pick was the Frost Trickster. I'm kind of feeling Prismari was open and, and feeling that it made a lot of sense. I like this in that late game, you can, you hold on to your lands and you can um, draw through and kind of get to cycle through. It's not as good as a Scry, um, but then again, it can be better than a Scry. So I really like that. I think it, kind of for me it kind of cemented me in um prismari the i hate the illustrious historian i think that's a terrible card um the dragon's approach is also a trap um and then the but fuddler is interesting but i just don't think as good as the the adept um you hate the historian i hate this the reason i hate the historian i'll tell you is because the token it creates comes in tapped And I always forget that. So let me be honest that it's really that I hate myself and that I misplay. Why does it come in tap? Because it's it says create a tap 3-2 two, 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 red and white spirit yeah. creature token. But can't you do that at instant speed? Yes. Yes, you can. And that's why I said the reality is that I hate myself for not remembering that <laughs> and just misplaying. So that's why I've decided I hate that card. Like... I keep say, I in my head I'm thinking I've got a blocker and like I'm gonna and then I die. <laughs> it's happened on several occasions. Oh goodness. Yeah. I mean I I I get that. Um I mean I'm kinda in the same boat. Like a lecturer's historian, even when I've played Lorehold, like cool. Um, but I don't like yes, there are spirit lords. Yeah. Um, but they're few and far in between. Well, I think I think I was I think playing going, Prismari. I, yeah. And I don't think it does anything really with like it doesn't synergize with Prismari. No, because I mean pr yeah, Prismari, you're you're already gonna want to spend a bunch of mana to drop your big bombs. Right. Spending five mana for a tapped three two, like, is that really on your radar at that point? Yeah. And I mean I think it's it sounds good because it's a two it's a two for one built in, right? You get two bodies out of one card it's just my experience has always been where i misplayed with it or didn't realize what it was going to do and you know then misplayed uh counting thinking it'd be a defender and it wasn't do you do you have you played with that marcus do you like it better or you just think i was being too hard no i no i haven't played with it um i just i i think for a two for one i think it's not bad it's it's value early game and late game um, but you're right. It's not. It's not the combat trick you you want it to be. It's the if the opponent's not paying attention, you're gonna swing in with a, thir a three two unexpectedly. Yeah, so yeah. It wants where, to be in a more to... aggressive deck. What I just feel like the the red decks aren't as aggressive in this format. No, and that, and like like I said, it, I I have played with it, and I I've gone. Oh yeah, this is going to do something. I have, I have, you know, this one, maybe the, these two cards that, that actually care about spirits. And then it's just like, 
later on in the game. Do I really want to spend five mana for a three two, or do I want to spend you know hold up and spend you know that five mana elsewhere to where it, maybe it makes a bigger difference? So yeah, I think and, and I I don't think it's bad. I just am a little down on it. Um, I didn't mention, but I think access tunnel is is a decent card. Um, making things unblockable is always um, powerful late game. It is a little restrictive and it costs a little bit for it, um, but I think it's still something worth kind of keeping an eye on. All right, let's go we'll on. Keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on it. Let's move on to our pick six here and see what we are presented with. All right, starting to thin out, really getting an idea of what's available for us. We have Dueling Coach, Master Symmetrist, Team Pennant, Mage Hunter's Onslaught, Sudden Breakthrough, Tome Shredder, Big Play, Spring Main Servin, Spectacle Mage, and Lorehold Pledge Mage. I uh, believe this is an Elias pick. Yes, it is. Um... So <clears throat> what I would pick is to say looking at it creature token, which I'm not in, so the team pennant is and to me. So to say more than likely here I'm gonna be picking up another Mage Hunters onslaught. So to say I, I I think picking it up isn't a bad thing at all. It's removal. Um, having two of them in deck means I should hopefully see it more often. Um, yeah, I mean the 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 only other other thing I would be looking at um, is the symmetrist. Uh, mm-hmm. Yes, I am not really doing a whole lot, you know, because I know Quandrix is wanting that equal, equal um, power toughness thing. Um, but even even if I'm not um, not doing that, it's it's a four, four for four with reach that gives itself trample. Yeah. And you do have that bookworm. Um, that's a seven, seven. Oh, but it, but has it already has trample. Already has trample. You're right. Yep. And that's exactly what I thought is, oh, hey, cool. Um, like I said, I'm going to pick up the Mage Hunters Mage Hunters Onslaught just so I know I'm going to, I should be seeing that removal more often. Consistently. Yeah. Yep. Whereas the Symmetrist is going to be a very close second for the fact that, again, it's a 4-4 with reach. Like, that reach does a lot i mean inklings are very prevalent Mm -hmm. um small small bodied flyers are prevalent um man i'm kind of just talking myself into in the symmetrist more than mage hunters (laughs) so i think both are because you make a good point a lot of the flyers are kind of smaller one twos two twos two threes um or three twos um that master symmetrist does good however i i agree i don't I like having two mage hunters on slots. I feel like you yep. get you get them pretty consistently, and and like I said, I think that's a game changing card. I mean, uh, yes, again, removal, yes, but yeah. the second effect is is more important than people realize. So you're gonna you're gonna stick with the mage hunters on slot, or did you want to switch to? Nope, I'm gonna stick with mage hunters on slot. Like All right, Marcus, what about you? I'm gonna go with the lore hold pledge mage. The um, uh syncs with the major craft theme I have. Um makes reflective golem good with Defiant Strike. Um my second pick would have been Sudden Breakthrough, which also makes the Golem better. <laughs> Since it gives it plus two plus one first strike and gets tokens, which replaces its mana. Um but the Pledge Mage is really good because if I there's not a lot of lore hold synergy kind of going on. I guess there is pretty decent white well, there's not too much white kind of going on, but there's a lot of red going on. So if I need to go to Prismari, it'll do good in Prismari um, colors. And then if I need to switch to Silver Quill, because um, I do because of black or whatnot, especially if this Mage Hunter's onslaught had gone around, maybe people are switching out of black. I'm surprised people didn't take that. Um, 
then I can go um, Sower equal to, and it can keep it flexible. Um, so I'm going to pick that. That makes no. That makes sense. I like where you're because you've kind of been flexible throughout here and got a lot of options. Um, and I think you, your points are valid that that keeps you in still a lot of options, um, but works well with what you've got as a kind of a shell. Moving two two forward. with first strike isn't is not bad at all. Right, and then the threat of really having a combat running. trick. Um, yeah, like with the reflective golem, where now you don't care that you're casting the combat trick on the reflective golem. Or I don't care as much because the pledge mage is still going to benefit from it. Um, when I looked at this, um, I noticed the Mage Hunter's Onslaught. I felt like that was a late Mage Hunter's Onslaught. Um, it really tempted me. Um, but I had previously played... The last Prismaria I played um, ended up running two Mage Hunter's Onslaughts and splashing a lot of black and was really more of a, a three-color deck. So I intentionally kind of stayed away from that and tried to just go with a more uh, Prismari build. So that's where I went with the Spectacle Mage. Um, I think that just wanting to be Prismari and um, wanting to get those big spells down um, and out cheaper um, just seemed like what I wanted and wanted what where I was going with the deck and what I felt um, based on, again, thinking what things might be wheeling, uh, what seemed open coming around this way. That Spectacle Mage just seemed um, too good to pass up. I think the Lorehold Pledge Mage is really good um, and fits into the Prismari deck and would be probably a, a close second for me um, because it gets in that Magecraft and the first strike 2-2 uh, two, two, kind of give you some uh, meat on the ground um, to threaten with or be um, uh, intimidating. All right, looks like we got through that pack with no controversy. I think we're kind of segmenting our colors, so we're all kind of now on early. Yeah. And there's, with fewer choices, there's fewer wrong choices then, right? All right, okay. let's move on to pick six, or pick seven here. We're kind of winding down on the uh, last couple here before we start to see wheels. All right, so we've got in here, solve the equation, a whirlwind denial, curate, arrogant poet, Enthusiastic Study, Tome Shredder, Spined Karok, Biblioplex Assistant, a Cogwork Archivist. And this will be for Marcus to get make the first choice. Whenever you're ready. I'm going to pick Enthusiastic Study. <laughs> um, because it makes Golem better. <laughs> <laughs> Um, is this is just to spite me to just <laughs> no like literally like the, the two three golem turns into can turn into what a six five no oh, well if I counter it or copy it uh it's an eight five then and I learn so that's pretty good um yeah also apparently no one wants tome shredders that's pretty sad puppy dogs um. But yeah, I would pick into like SETI. I would pick maybe the Biblioplex assistant second. Um, because that'll help refresh my combat tricks. So that's those are my picks. Yeah, I, I the enthusiastic study is good. Um, there's the one two double striker um, that we haven't seen any of, but picking that up if you're in there with that enthusiastic study is really good. Um, Elias, what would you pick? So, where I'm looking at right now with what I've got, um, I like the Carrick. A 2-4 for 3. Um, it's a nice booty um, that a, not a lot of like red damage spells are going to be doing a whole lot with. You know, unless, unless you're talking about the, uh, the uh, heated debate. Um, but I mean, other than that, thinking red for me, red doesn't red red's not going to be dealing a lot with this, um, or they're going to have to. I'm I'm going to be getting at least a two for one for it um, if I attack or great defender. Um, I was looking at the arrogant poet 
because I already have that life gain, losing the two, you know, doesn't matter as much. The only thing is it's flying on the attack, so that pulls me away from it. Um, I mean, yes, again, like I said, I can get away with losing that life and making it flying, but but if somebody else is running flyers, then that's really not doing a whole lot. Um, I would I would pick the the assistant over the poet for the fact that I'm pull I'm going to be pulling the spell I need. Um, on top of that, it's a two one body. That way, I can have it for for tradesies. Um, so pick here um, is going to be the assistant just for the fact that right now I don't have anything to deal with flyers other than a kill spell. And I don't really want to use a kill spell on a 2-2 flyer. I'd rather use this assistant. Um, whereas the assistant draws me into next turn, it draws me into my kill spell if I need it, or, or, or anything else that I may need later on. Um, say, say, you know, pack two or pack three, I, I pull environmental sciences and I have to main it or anything else. Um, it just gives me a little bit more consistency on what I want to do. You, you got me there. I thought you were going to go with the, uh, spined care rock and then you went with biblioplex assistant. Which I mean, yeah, like I said, those, those would be the two, two things that I'm really looking at for where I'm at in the, in, in my, in my, in my draft. But that that two one flyer, like for four, yeah, it's not the best. But the fact that it's going to set up my next turn, um, I think I think can do a lot. Where worse worse comes to worse, it, it's it's a dead card. Yeah, no, and you did um, pass on the reach in the last pack, and for the uh, kill spell. So I think that fits better with kind of that decision, and I, I it makes sense. Uh, for myself on this, I went and I gave some puppy dog love. So I actually picked the Tome Shredder. I really like that card. Um, I think it's good in Prismari because you end up with a lot of things to um, in your graveyard to exile. Um, and the haste on it is... I find that I don't use him to attack. I use the haste um, to make him a 3-3 three, three blocker, oh. right? He's a He's ready to gobble up a attacker when they're not paying attention or don't realize that he can um, grow into a 3-3. So you block with them, tap him to exile a card, and all of a sudden you got a 3-3 just eats their 2-2 two -two, um, where they kind of maybe thought you were going to trade or weren't sure what was... Um, or, they, or a combat trick or something, but you get to eat something up with it. All right, boys, we are here at the last pack... Before we wheel anything, let's see what's left for us. Pick number eight. All right, we get ourselves an Aether Helix, Ageless Guardian, Curate, Vortex Runner, Novice Dissector, Illustrious Historian, Leyline Invocation, and a Quandrix Campus. All right, pick eight means Elias will get to deliver his choice first so now since we're later on in the draft now i'm looking at that campus on if i need to splash it's a great thing to splash um it, it takes up one of my forests my forest slots instead of you know maybe my sw a swamp slot or or an extra um and then even if i don't go blue i can splash it i don't need to use it um I mean, because, yeah, if I don't go blue, then it's a forest with a scry ability that, yeah, it's a slow forest, but late game scry. Um, the Leyline Invocation, um, I do like that for the fact that it's you, you can make it something big depending on, you know, lands. Um, so, I mean, six for a 6-6, a six, six, not bad, um, but I already have... Uh, seven seven trample um again if i had picked up the symmetrist earlier then this invocation starts to look a little bit better because then it's a six six trampler so yeah it looks better um and then the novice dissector i like that one as well um you know 
Green Black wants wants to sacrifice those pests or use those pests to gain life. Um, I like that this enables the sack outlet to make something else bigger um, while also gaining life. I do like that. Um, but for what I have, even though I'm in that in that life gain archetype, I have I don't have those life gain cards right now. I don't have those you know create create pest cards. So here I'm I'm going to be picking the uh, the campus here because it it allows me to splash out other card or other color if needed. Um, whereas late game, like Marcus said earlier with the campuses, it allows me to set up um, for something that may may be a dead card later on in that game. Yeah, no, that's fair, and that's where I say I think I have to reevaluate because I think I wouldn't even consider the campus. And I think you've both made good arguments about why, at least, especially at this point, the campus um, is at least worth consideration and makes sense. Marcus, what would you pick here if your uh, last one to go with everything else we've got? Uh, I kind of really want the novice this sector. I'm not picking that though, um, because I sacrifice outlets generally tend to be good the problem with it is it's doing it as sorcery so you can't do it in response to things putting like plus one plus one counter on a target creature is pretty effective it can buff up the golem it can buff up the magecraft and with all the first the counter the um uh, combat tricks i have i think just kind of buffing the base creatures is pretty good um if that one black signpost also wheels um it also makes that relevant um so now maybe I'm talking myself. Well the problem is is like I have combat tricks and so I have very few creatures. And so I really don't want to be I feel like I feel like I'm gonna get into a point where it's just gonna be like that and like something of like value and it's just not gonna do anything. Mm-hmm. Um I don't have anything that's creating abilities yet, although those illustrious historians keep wheeling now that I'm thinking about it, so maybe it'd be worth it to pick that up and then be able to pick up an illustrious historian later and then have him as chump fodder okay i've talked myself into it i'm gonna pick the <laughs> <laughs> i love it i i love the the active you know the thinking and the thought process there um because i think all that that you were saying makes sense um and i can see how you uh came to that conclusion I'll, I really also, wish it said sacrifice a creature versus another creature, so I could sacrifice itself to put a plus one plus one counter. But yeah, um, that would make it a much more valuable of a pick. But that's fine. It's the one limitation. What would you, if you didn't take that, what were you thinking you would take? Uh, the historian. Um, I kind of want the ageless guardian. That one four is definitely relevant, um, but I don't want to commit to white, so I'd pick the historian. Okay, fair enough. I. Yeah, I wasn't sure between those two what you what your thoughts kind of were on that. I feel like I would have, given with your previous picks and that, I kind of would have gone with the Ageless Guardian. But again, I think that's just because I have a distaste for the Historian. Um, and it does, be, but I does do think the histor- Historian fits in with your other picks a little bit better and probably makes more sense. I, I'm a little shocked, Elias, that you didn't pick the Leyline Invocation because because you are in black if that signpost black does wield that technically counts as something that um will synergize with it um so i i think that might have been a better pick for you over the land i mean i i see i see where you're getting at um yeah but i mean six for a six six at sorcery speed um i don't know I'd, i'd i'd rather have the land to set to to set up for late game late game draws if i if i'm not playing anything you don't have an elemental mastery yet to ramp no you don't okay maybe nope. not never mind then carry on yeah i'm I'm on the same that ley line invocation is interesting i just think the six mana is too high of a cost uh, for it i'd rather have the um what are the fractals um that you can yeah. pay x um, it, yeah. even though it'd be green green and I th- but even then the Quandrix campus I think sets you up for picking those up and being able to um, use this green blue for that I mean yeah two two picks ago if I had picked the Symmetrist I wouldn't pick the campus I would be I would be picking the 
the invocation because yeah i mean at that point it's a six six is because how i look at it is six for a six six yes i get a body yes it makes it to where it's something that they have to answer to but the other thing that i've noticed with this draft we have not seen any of the summoning lessons so no spirit summoning no inkling summoning we haven't seen those so and then on top of that we haven't seen any really we haven't seen anything that creates pests so yes i get a six six but then how i look at it is what if i'm playing i'm going to be playing against go wide what if i'm playing against go wide one ones that six six really does nothing at that point without the trample if i had if i had picked up the symmetrist earlier that invocation you know starts screaming to me if the uh well, odds are that won't wheel, but that uh, oh. master symmetrist would sync well with that. Oh, oh yeah, and and that and that and like and like I said, that's what Quandrix is wanting. Quandrix is wanting those those equal power toughness to to do something with. What did you pick, Andrew? Oh, we haven't done. Sorry, I was we I got engaged with your, your discussion there. <laughs> um, I picked. I actually picked the vortex runner. Um, late game unblockable is. What I want in my Prismari deck um, is just a way to get in. Um, you know, if I've my kind of my thinking is I've got burn spells to burn through early creatures um, or finish out the game, um, and I just need those things. You know, you have a couple of flyers, just ways to chip in for damage. There's not. I don't think Prismari has a lot of like uh, big finishers. Um, at least a couple of times I've played it, it's been kind of more chippy where it's just get in for the damage and let it add up to 20 um, over some turns. So I like this Vortex Runner because it takes a while, but once he gets, once you get up to eight lands, um, a 3-3 three, three unblockable um, is something to be dealt with. I mean, 100% I agree with you. I think the, I think Vortex Runner early game um, isn't as good as Vortex Runner late game, 100%. To say, I mean, you hit, you hit it. The a three three that can't be blocked, mm-hmm. yeah, that that can do a lot late game where where it's stally. Because I mean, if Vortex Runner is good late game, if the match that you're playing and Vortex Runner is good late game, that means it's been a lot of stally. Both people are are walled off, not wanting to do anything, and then this thing just chipping away. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I, the other part to me that I like is that I'm willing to pay for that effect. like, And that's typically what you get in blue, is something where you pay to make another creature unblockable, or like access tunnel. Um, the fact that it just turns on and is a 3-3 that's unblockable, so you don't have to pay for it turn after turn, um, really makes this stand out to me. The other thing that I like is that even early game, I, I agree it's not as great, but being a 2-3, it lets you block. It stays alive yep. a little bit better. If it was a 2-2 that got plus one, plus one later on, I would be a little bit less excited about it because it's going to get picked off a little bit easier. Yep, 100% agree with you. Totally disagree. I think if you're really going into Prismari, I think Curate would be better um, because you're you're surveilling. And with odds, the copy spells that are going on, I think having the choice of the top two cards of your deck is just going to help you get the spells to synergize with that. And I think the three for three two. I think um, you're not, especially with the throw possibilities. Your odds are you're probably going to be discarding your lands, um, and so getting two eight to make it unblockable. I think with how Prismari wants to do with having kind of the red kind of draw effects, you're probably not going to be prioritizing that. Um, so I I think um, I I don't agree that that is the better choice. Um, I think, and I, I'm not sorry. I think that Vortex Runner would wheel, so I, I, I wouldn't go that route. Uh, I like, I like your opinion. The issue that I have, and I know this is is weird, is that I feel like Curate wants to be learn instead of draw a card, and the fact that it isn't bothers me. Well, it's um, it's that one uh, dual or not dual face card that uh. It's the it's the Demir card that had like the two. It was like oh, the split card. One, yeah, it was a split card from um, guilds. Do you know what I'm talking about? That like was like the efficient draw spell on yeah. that set. 
Like that's essentially what it is on as a blue for one. So that's why I think it's it's better. Um, it just it just looks fancier because it doesn't say surveil. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that. Plus, you're you don't have any learn cards, so you're not too worried about that. No, I'm not. And and I think you make a good point. My issue and my concern when I go Prismari, I tend to run really light on creatures, and so I kind of prioritize them a little bit higher. Um than not because I find otherwise I find too often in pack three I'm just taking whatever creatures available to me um just because I need bodies. And that's probably just a me and my you know draft style and I just need to be more aware of when I'm picking creatures and when I'm not. Discovery dispersal. That's the card I'm thinking of. It was bothering me. Couldn't remember it. Elias, right. with that new information presented, do you dis- do you still stand by Vortex Runner? Or would you? What do you think after that idea? I mean, I I I personally would still go over Vortex Runner for for it. Um, I do agree with you, and I mean, looking at the picks that Andrew has, yeah, he has all creatures. Mostly. He has, I mean, he's got four creatures and three spells. Um, one spell is is a draw spell that with discard. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I, I, I do agree with you there. Um, it also gives him, I mean, but that's the thing is, is his curve is really, really low. So I don't think, I don't think Vortex Runner or the Curate really matters for curve just because he already has it low. Um, I don't know. I think, I think late game when you when when you're running out of cards and you pull up a curate i think i'd rather i'd i'd rather see the vortex runner instead of a curate i mean curate cur- curate is good i mean it's not bad late game um it, it you look at two cards and, poten- and potentially get rid of two lands to be able to draw into you know a second card to help win um but then you're two mana down Whereas Vortex Runner, you're three mana in, you're going to get something that next turn, pretty much, I mean, you know, later in, you're you're going to be swinging because, because yes, you know, you're, 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 you're saying that, hey, you know, a lot of the Prismari draw spells, you're going to be discarding for, you know, and to draw or discard to something, and you're more than likely going to discard a land. But looking at what he has, I mean, he's got two discard outlets, one with the Thrill and one with the Soothsayer. So I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know if he necessarily needs the curate when the soothsayer is is doing that draw discard, draw discard, um, and it's doing it pretty, pretty freaking early at that. Um, I, but, I mean, I, I, I think I, I think I still agree with Andrew in in going with the vortex runner. I don't mean so and. In- Especially, you know, so I didn't mean to like be like, oh, you got to pick a side, and we all have to be who's who's wrong. I don't know if that was interpreted like that. No. Um, but I think going back to, for my evidence, also the soothsayer, soothsayer drawing discard, he's discarding his lands. I was right for that, and then the tome shredder is going to want um, plus one incident sorcery spells in the graveyard um, to grow bigger. So I, think I mean, that's another, I mean, yeah, true, I get theory. that, but I mean, the draw discard, not necessarily is he going to be discarding discarding those those lands maybe maybe he discards something else because he's looking for those lands um because i mean soothsayer its ability it, its ability is online turn three so turn three he doesn't draw into that land he uses soothsayer to to draw you know to maybe draw into that or at least get a little bit easier um whereas yeah cure cure or the curate will dig a little bit deeper than soothsayer but i mean I I I th- I think I think for what he has, I think the vortex runner is still the better pick. Because I mean, going going on top of that, he has right now he has a pretty aggressive deck early on, with the tome shredder, the the frost trickster, the spectacle mage. I mean, he's got he's got he already has two flyers with for the evasion. Yes, that are they flyers that can be that can be answered to yes they're two twos they can they could be answered to really quickly um i i just think if if he's going late game 
I think the Vortex Runner is going to be, I, I think it's going to do more work late game than Cure 8 will. Well, see, the, this is a farce because the true pick you should be picking is Lustrous Historian, but we all know. <laughs> <laughs> I So, as, as, as you all know, I've already made my picks, I've already played the the matches, so I have to defend what I say. However, at the end of all of this, I think I'm going to go with Marcus and say if I had to do this again, I think the curate here is is a better pick. Uh, for the reason, and let me say why, is that I think between those, Vortex Runners are more likely to either wheel or not get picked up early in future packs. Um, and the curate probably more likely to get picked up so I could pick up another Vortex runner, uh, I think, a little easier than a Curate. So I don't regret my decision. I made the right decision. But if I did it again, I would try Marcus's way. I made the right decision. But if I had, if I had to do it over <laughs> again, I wouldn't do it again. <laughs> Everybody wins. Great, great, <laughs> great sticking to your guns there, bud. I mean, I've already made the choices. I've got to do it. But Marcus made some pretty good arguments. And um, I, I I think it's a real close one. I don't know. Um, and I think you can make good arguments on both sides. I think it's a close call. Um, but I can see where maybe the curate is a little bit better. And I didn't uh, give it as much credit as it deserves. Well, it's that time. We have now gotten our first eight picks. Before we see anything that wheels, we're going to decide if we've got a solid start. All right, gentlemen, who would like to go first? Have we decided? Do we know who's going first? I mean, heck, I'll go first. All I'm right. pretty, pretty stoked with my start. I mean, I've got two for sure kill spells that are going into into my deck that are going to be aggressive kill spells. I've got a third uh, destruction spell that not necessarily has to be has to be for creature or planeswalker. I mean artifact enchantment. I can I can get rid of that crap. Um I have a very I'm very dedicated to a wedge so I know where I'm at for future packs. Um but then with my last pick there I have I have options of of maybe branching out into that third color now. So what are you kind of what are you looking to wheel of what we saw, first of all? Looking for wheels. Let's see. Now I gotta go now I gotta go back through what I've already seen. Um Just a couple of ideas. Yeah, I mean if I see any of the Brackus trudges, um <laughs> which I have a feeling I will, mm -hmm. uh probably pick one of those. Um, if I see that second infused with vit vitality, I'm going to take that, you know, I'm going to play, I'm going to play all kill spells because heck yeah. Um, that, that silver coil pledge mage. If I see that that's getting picked up. Um, but I mean, also, you know, there, there is potential to see some blue, you know, maybe, maybe, may, may, maybe some, some of the, like the befuddler or the, the soothsayer, Maybe those wheel. Doubt it, but maybe. Let's say I, I have the option for it. So, yeah. And then, what about in packs two and three? What are you really looking for? What do you think this deck wants to kind of shore it up and be a a great deck? I mean, it, it, anything having to do with with in weather weather bloom. I mean, if I could get the the elder dragon, great. Um, but what I really, really want to see, which I think is an amazing card. Let me go find it real quickly. Um, is it's the one where every time you gain life, you put a one, one counter on it. And I think it has menace too. Oh, I know which one you're talking about. I was say, I think it's a duel. Oh, blood researcher. So yeah. say one black green for one black green for a two two menace, and then whenever you gain life, put a one one counter on it. I mean that thing gets so disgusting. People people have to deal with that, and with with what I've got, I've I'm already looking at some some life gain already. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> that's what I'm looking for. That blood researcher. Elder Dragon, really? I'm looking for any any creature within within the uh, within Witherbloom. 
Yeah, no, that blood research, you're right. It definitely, it, it eats up my shock as soon as I see it, because... Oh, 100%. Not, it's so good. We're not letting but, that but get that, out of control. And that's the th that's the great thing, is is say say I don't draw that turn three, and and you happen to have a shock late game, I play that, you're like, oh, I'm going to shock it. That's when I play one of my, you know, one, one, of, one of my, oh, I'm going to gain two life off of right. this. You know, I, I'm going to save it. So. Yeah, well, in late game, I have to really think about when I want to try and shock it because of that. I, I think, well, if you've got mana open, yeah. I can't just shock it because you're going to do something. You know, you're just infused with vitality just to keep it alive is is something. And then you get to attack with it or, you know, and it's a death touch. Yeah, definitely um, a must deal with a creature. Yep. I mean, yeah. So really, any, any, any... Any rare Witherbloom creature I'm looking for, Blood Researcher looking for. Um, so I mean that's what I'm hoping for. But again, like I said, I, I I have I have opportunity to branch if I need to. So overall, you're you happy with this? You think you are off to a solid start? I am definitely happy. I am definitely feeling that this is a solid start. I, I, I like firework sound effect. I'm sorry, Mario. The princess is another castle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Marcus. How do you think you did? Did you get off to a solid start? Uh, I think I'm probably not giving myself enough credit. Yeah, I, I think flexibility in, in pack one can definitely line me up for a bomb and, and pack two I can I'm kind of leaning towards red white but I'm open up to go Mardu I'm open up to go um, just Kai um, it all kind of depends what the values I could probably go teamer if I really wanted to too so that's pretty okay things I'm looking for any pretty much any magecraft spell um, there's a lot of really powerful ones in white that I would love to see, like Clever Luminancer, that's an uncommon, that's the one that would essentially get prowess, or double prowess. Um, the zero one that gets plus two, plus two for every time you copy or cast a spell. Um, that would be great. Uh, the Leon and Light Scribe, so good. Because um, you're going to get plus one, plus one till on a turn every time you cast a copy of spell. Um, those are the white, although white seems a little light, so um, there's some other stuff too. Um, Honestly, uh, Marcus, I th I think you want to see another golem. Really, I think so. I was say with 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 how your deck's looking to build. I mean, even even while picking your cards, um, a lot of your picks were going. Oh well, you know, if I target golem. Oh well, if I target golem. Um, <clears throat> I think I think you know, looking for another go golem, it just makes the cantrips a little bit more consistent. Yeah. Um, so that with Prismari being, you know, open, I definitely think that I could possibly get some copy effects, which would make it that much more fun. Um, but I'm also open up to have a third color for whatever seems the most powerful. So, yeah, I think I'm doing fairly okay. Yeah, I think you. I think you're right. The environmental sciences that you picked up early um, really lets you be open to kind of going where, seeing what wheels around, and then what you open and pack to as well. Um, so I think you're in a really flexible spot, and I um, don't see it as a, a bad thing at all in this one, where it's not like you're uncertain or just have some random things. They all have a, a synergy, um, but you're able to kind of move in whatever direction uh, opens itself up to you. Um, as for mine, I feel like I did get off to a solid start. I liked it. I'm... It's hard because I, you know, I got to play the games. I got to see what what happened. But just looking at these, um, I think it's a decent start. I'm not sure that I'm happy with that crackle with power, um, in the end. But with you know, with everything I've got, I like well, what I have. What I'm looking for in the wheel uh, right now is some of those Prismari uh, spells coming back around. I'm thinking that there was uh, some decent ones, um, particularly heated debate. Um, and, and in future packs too, Heated Debate, I think, is just a really good card for for this deck. Any more direct damage. Um, more Tome Shredders. I love that card. Um, 
The Elemental Masterpiece um, was in our second uh, pick um, that we passed around. I think that's a decent, um, a really good two for one um, to come around. And then, yeah, really just more removal, um, heated debates all day. Sebastian, now that you're back, who you looked through to give any last observations? Yeah. Um, I Based on the first three picks uh, that Andrew made, um, the rest make sense. Actually, the, even the shock makes sense after the first two picks. There's no way you're not taking shock after picking those first two cards. Um, but yeah, it definitely like um, it definitely did follow its own path. Like it did create its own path, I like that. I like uh, I like Elias's last pick of the land. Um, I like I like drafting duels early, early. Leaves you open for so much stuff. It seems like every time I draft, people are scrambling for mana fixing at the end of the draft, and it's like oh, it's too late. I'm um, taking a look at your stuff. Okay, it looks like. Just checking it out. Looks like you're just feeling it out still. Is that what I'm getting from that? Kind of still yeah. feeling out where you want to go from here. Pretty much. Just because that novice um, dissector seemed a bit odd. But if you want the most diversity for future picks, if that makes sense. Well, yeah, and with how we were talking about the the ink ink caster and you know a lot of the variety, it just, yeah it definitely mm -hmm. just helps them to whatever yeah synergy or signposts I can get later. Well, let me put this question to you, Sebastian. You weren't prepared for this, but if you could, uh, if you had to jump in and take over for one of the three of us, uh, who would you, uh, who would you want to be in that seat? Uh, just uh, feeling like you had a solid start. Oh, obviously yours, Andrew. Uh, yes. It's just it's it's an obvious game plan, you know. Winner. Yeah, it, it's oh. um, it's it's a archetype I'm familiar with. You know, like where it's going. Um, it makes sense. Uh, I don't have to know too much about this set. With Elias's, I would have to know a lot more about this set. Like, and it, it, I can see that he already knows a lot about this set just by the way he's picking his cards. So, I, if I were to take over Elias's, um, I would have to know what what he was thinking and what his familiarity with the set is. And just looking at these, I'm like, yeah, he knows he knows what he's doing. Like, as far as what's coming in the set, uh, he's already kind of picked a path. Um, where yours, uh, Andrew, is more universal across all magic sets. Yeah, I think well, I think Prismari kind of lines up more with what Red Blue does more often than mm -hmm. some of the other colleges. Yeah, Golgari in the set is not Golgari, <laughs> right. or Lorehold. The red yeah, white exactly. is not really. Yeah, and it looks like um, Moros. Yeah, that's where um, that's where Marcus is going. It looks like it's going. Um, Mardu, but not in the traditional Mardu, where yeah. it's you know a lot of um, blood artist effects or stuff, little guys or whatever. You know, it's a very uh, non-traditional Mardu, more like almost like controlish, like a lot of value, a lot of control. -y kind of you know. Well, so that's that's at least that's what I would assume if I were, if I had to take over Marcus's, yeah. I would assume that it's more of a you want to slow the game down from this perspective and just try to get really good value out of things. Well, and that's, and that's the thing is that's one of the reasons why I, I think I enjoy this set so much is the fact that anybody coming in and drafting Strixhaven for the first time, even if they, if they don't know anything about this, uh, about the set. So like for me being a Boros player, I go in and I start drafting Boros and then I'm like, all right, I'm going to build an aggro deck. And then I look at it. I'm like, what the hell is going on? It makes it to where if you're drafting the colors you like, you're going to be drafting or you're, you're going to be playing something that you are, that you were maybe unfamiliar with and or uncomfortable with. Um, I don't know. It keeps you on your toes. It makes it to where you have to, you have to learn how to play magic from a different perspective. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, if you if you go in and you see a lot of red white cards and you're like, oh yeah, Boros, Boros Aggro, that's kind of like what Boros has been in draft for so long, and then you go with that expectation, you're gonna yeah, you're not gonna do so well. I just want to point out that you're gonna enjoy Andrew's deck until you you know turn three, draw a Vortex Runner, and you're like, why the fuck is this in the curate? <laughs> <laughs>
I I take it back. Vortex Runner was the right <laughs> choice. You did not convince me that I should have picked Curate. Vortex Runner was correct. And I'm unofficially the winner because we let Sebastian choose and he picked me even though I Oh, there's a there's he, a winner? Yes, I <laughs> because he picked me, there is a winner. And mostly it's just what deck are you most comfortable playing? I and Judge. see the 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 thing is, is I was going to say you from what Sebastian, you know, has said, you drafted the deck that doesn't really fit Strixhaven. It fits is it? <laughs> Yeah, I would encourage you guys, if you are interested, to watch uh, the draft video of this and see what happened after this. Oh, boy. Um, I definitely oh, spoiler, am not as good small at... No, it's not a spoiler spoiler, but no, no, I no, definitely... Can you give us a small spoiler of oh. what happened? <laughs> I, I mean, the small spoiler is I'm not as good at these two colors as Elias or anybody else. <laughs> and so... I I love you. I love that you say Elias. I'm sorry. I meant Sebastian. I was gonna say right? you 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 talk to Marcus over here. I don't understand what blue is. I don't understand counter spells. So, but thank you for for saying that. I know how to play even, blue red. Even you might have done better than me with this deck. <laughs> Let's say it was. I think I think I was stretching for a, a 14th or a 15th creature at the end, and ooh, it was yeah, it was. I got tempted by a lot of big Prismari spells. And I think that's one of the traps with Prismari, because like I said, Prismari wants to drop those big spells later on in the game. And I think I think that's the trap with Prismari is if you grab too many of those big spells and not enough of the environmental sciences, yeah. you're kind of you're kind of gonna shoot yourself in the foot. But I think it goes into what you were saying where you've got to come at it. It's similar, but you've got to come at it from a different angle. Yep, and that and that and that's that's one thing that I do like about Prismari in this set is yes, it is very similar to Is It, but it's not Is It? Because I mean, I mean, if if we if we just look at your picks, it's gonna say, and we take out the shock, we take out the thrill of possibility because they're technically not in this set. We take those out, and you look at the rest of those. Is this actually Is It anymore? I mean, it's blue red. So. Yeah, yes, it's blue red. But is it doing? Is it things? I don't know. Is it? <laughs> Courtesy so of Raul. That, that's oh, oh, Raul's joke. All right, that's our time. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you, Marcus, Elias, Sebastian, for participating and providing us your feedback and suggestions. Anything you guys want to say while we sign off here? Please like, comment, subscribe. I was gonna say, John, you were the true MVP of this video. Thank you, sir. All right. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you another time. Enjoy. <laughs>